fancy intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! You're here, I'm here, and we're talking Star Trek Fleeka Man again because today, for maybe the first time in years, I'm gonna be talking about missions. Yes! Missions! They're cool and important. We'll talk about how you can find all the missions in the game in a second. Shout out my boy Ripper. But I want to kind of have a little quick conversation about the Okay. Most important mission in the game is a little bit of a, uh, maybe it's just me being dramatic. I've never been dramatic before. That's not my style. Never am I dramatic. Never am I all up in your screen like, yo, listen to me. Look, I'm Rev. I'm important. Listen, I never do that. Not me. It's not my style. But what I want to talk about today is a mission called Angel in Disguise that is one of the most important missions in the game. And to remind you of how important missions can be to your gameplay. To do so, I'm going to jump into my research tree to show you something that you've gone, yo, well, maybe that's just one of those well researchers. I can't even get that research. It's completely pointless for me. Why even worried about it? Need some fancy particle. Sound familiar? That might have been you. That is probably your enhanced warp course theory. Now, let me go ahead and point out that this mission I'm about to talk about is an early 40s mission, and it does have a little bit of some difficulty to complete. However, it gives you bonus warp range. That is absolutely incredible. Obviously, everybody out there wants bonus warp rates. It's one of the biggest problems of the game is, gosh, how do I get way the heck out there? And then, you know, we'll go down the tree for further things. But how do we get this elusive warp particle? It says by completing the mission Angel in Disguise, but what does that even mean? And what, how do I do that? If only there was a content creator who could answer that question. Ha! <laughs> so we're going to take a look at that right here. So Angel in Disguise is a mission that is part of your main storyline mission tree. Now, if you've not progressed through the mission tree, well, you need to be doing that because there are certain things that can only be accessed if you are participating in going through the daily progressions of missions. And when I say daily progressions, it's because you probably want to set aside time in your gameplay to go through missions at some point, whether it be weekly, monthly. Obviously, we have new missions getting added every month. It's actually one of the best things about Star Trek Fleet Command is that they're going into more of its own lore. The game is building story, and while that may not be for everybody, is big. To the point that there's actually over 2,000. Yes, believe it or not. Comment if you think I'm lying, but I'm not. I'm telling the truth. There's over 2,000, almost 2,500 missions in the game. In fact, if you go to your profile you'll notice like hey i've done like 1500 i've done 1400 on mine it's in the background i'm not letting you see it because i'm kind of embarrassed i get okay never mind i'll, I'll let you see there it is. there you go you can have a little peek see 1400 but we have so many missions in the game now that you really need to be completing them because these things happen you take a look at what i'm looking at here on my screen and what are you seeing hey dark space that's important angel in the skies that's important Dark Space is a mission that will auto-spawn when you hit level 38, but requires you to have completed a range of missions beforehand. Because of the way this game is set up, you have several different types of missions. You've got these kind of like independent missions. You can see by the little icon there at the top that aren't really bound to any particular faction. They, they just are really kind of set up for you to do at your leisure. However, you can't let that leisure kind of wipe you out because as you can see on the right picture, that right picture of the rewards for Angel Disguise, there is a system that you want to get through. Now let's get back to the, uh, the original purpose of this, which was discussing Angel Disguise as a mission. It is something that you have to get to level 42 to complete, but as you saw, you're going to get a bonus to warp range once you do the research. So I just collected my particle. We are receiving transmission, and I'm just going to start the next one. I want to show you some of the different warp ranges that I'm currently at. So my discovery at right now, which I've got researches that I've got to work on, is at Warp 50. It will be better than that soon. Ignore the graphic errors in the background. My Valdor is at 105. My Franklin at 90. My ISS Jelly at 85. My Antares at 60. And then finally, my Meridian at 97. Now, the reason I showed you those is go ahead and let you know that the prerequisites for this, the strongest ship that you have to kill up until this point is about 3.5 million. So you can do that with any epic, but the longest warp range that you need in this mission set is going to be about warp range 105. That is a little bit of a distance that could be problematic for some players. I'll put it back up here as you're going through the various missions to get there. Now, doesn't mean it's unobtainable, just that you will have to have higher warp range. An uncommon ship like the Valdor can get you there or a higher tier ISS Jelly. 
You can even maybe try to go for, as you're getting into the low 40s, leveling up your Franklin, leveling up your Meridian, and, and push that way. But the best way is going to be with something like the ISS Jelly or the Valdor Katinga or the Kelvin. Now, this is going to then pay out in terms of benefit and immediate once you go through and do your upgrade. So I'm actually just going to speed up a research real quick because honestly, it's too important, dang it. I want y'all to be able to see it and enjoy it. So we're going to go do that right now. And then we'll take a look at our warp ranges and see how it immediately boosts them because it just makes me happy. Now I will be blowing through this and not even bothering with doing all of the 77 days because, well, been saving up speed ups for moments like this. And sometimes you buy a pack every now and then to do that as well. All right, sped up. Now we are completed. Now we get the next one available, which you see. Now that we got war particles, we're opening up into deeper research here. And now look at this. We go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Now, as you continue going, you're going to start needing four star uncommons. But that is huge. We're immediately getting warp range bonus to ships. Now, where? Look at this warp 90. The only issues you're going to run into, and keep in mind that I've got a tier three Valdor. It's very cheap. You actually do this with basically no uncommon jet. You can do this just by having ISS Jelly Brawl and Parabellum. That's why I went for the Valdor. One of the uh, bonuses was the warp range that I was going to add to it. So now my warp range is sitting at 110. If I did that research, it would be knocked up to 130. And this is why going through the missions can be very important. Now, I talked about what you need to do if you want to access those missions. Well, Fantastic that you asked. There's a great site there called FCFC.space. If you've never heard about it, then honestly, you haven't been paying attention to my channel. It's created by Ripper, another content creator here for the program. And if you notice on the right side there, there's something called missions. Now, why can this be very important? I can look up any mission in the game, but let's say that I want to look up Angel in Disguise. What I'll do when I click on Angel in Disguise is I'll learn not only how to complete it, but I'll learn that it is part of a chain set of missions. Scrolling down will then allow me to find out what that chain is. And scrolling up will let you see all the way through the chain. So you've got to complete mission progress a long time ago. R&D level four. This is a beginner mission that you get the start of the game. That's part of going through it. If you scroll through all the way, you see we're going to get down to the level one missions. And then what you'll find is that the, the independent missions that you start the game with start to branch out a little bit. And this is a question that I get asked so often by different players. Now, the good thing about this, and this is becoming a plug for FCFC.space, is it also tell you what the rewards are for these various missions. So for example, hey, what if I wanted to go complete combat training 45 as a rookie? What would I have to do? You'll three level 45 plus hostiles, I get Gorkon shards and 10 million dilithium. What if I want to go past that? What's the veteran? Because we know the veterans always have great payouts for dilithium. Well, 19 million dilithium, more James T. Kirk shards, and some ultra tokens if I can kill a 5.8 million hostile. Yikes. That's a big beefy baddie. Thankfully, I've got the Valdor. So combinations of tools like FCFC.space and content creators nudging you, these types of things can remind you what's important to complete in the game and that you can't forget the mission system. The mission system is easy to forget, to be completely honest with you because there's so many of them in the game. Not only do you need to focus on ongoing missions, like we have the monthly set of missions, where right now we're doing things like swings and runabouts, and we've got the deposition, which is from three months ago, I never finished. Uh, take your own advice, Rev, and then an unwelcome surprise, which I'm working on now. All of this part of a mission system, and if you take the time, one of the things that's made Star Trek great is story. I can't tell you that all 2,000 missions in Star Trek Fleet Command are good, because let's just be honest, they're not. There's a lot of bad missions. The entire TNG arc was terrible, as was the TOS arc. Terrible stories, but Lower Decks has been amazing, recent missions have been amazing, and then focusing on a mission like Angel in Disguise, which I gotta put it back on the screen just to show you the rewards once again. Angel in Disguise, as well as the mission path. Essentially, if you go through Dark Space, level 38, and continue down that tree, you'll get to Angel in Disguise, which will give you that particle needed so you can start doing warp range. And Lord knows that you want it. In fact, I'm going back to my galaxy tree right now. No, I'm, I'm saving it. There's literally a material spin of it coming up, Rev. Stop. Behave yourself. Wait four days. But I really want the warp range. Now, remember, warp range 105 is the furthest planet that I had to do in this mission. Hostile strength really not that bad at 3.8 million. Might sound daunting to lower level players, but this video is to remind you 
because I try to do content for both lower levels and higher levels. Make sure you're going through your normal progression tree. And if you need help with missions, as always, you know what you can do? Yeah, you can talk to the Rev Deuce guy. Comment section or join the Discord. Haven't had a lot of people join the Discord last week. What's up, y'all? Y'all forgot about me? You don't love me? You need answers. Discord, FCFC channels, Dead by Daylight, Escape from Tarkov, Stream Raiders. We're doing everything there. Live long and prosper. Stay safe with those Space Cowboys. Deuces, that's me. I'll catch you on the next one and happy to help with anything that you need. Hopefully now you're paying attention when you find out there are missions like that that, wow, I bet you thought that you had to pay for that particle and now that you know you don't have to, it's kind of exciting. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Catch you on the next one. Kisses. Oh, interview with the new CM coming out. That's going to be fun. What? An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.